Hi there, and welcome back to Music Therapy and Beyond. My name is Alyssa, and today is going to be a fun episode honoring National Kazoo Day on January 28th. This is an obscure, fun little musical holiday, and I thought it would be a great opportunity for us to talk about using different wind instruments in music therapy and maybe share some fun song ideas that support a kazoo solo, because who doesn't love a kazoo solo? Let's get to it. listeners, I'm dropping in to ask if you've heard about our exciting announcement. Music Therapy and Beyond has launched a totally new website to house all things Music Therapy and Beyond. Check it out at musictherapyandbeyond.com. Now back to the episode. If you look up intervention or instrument ideas for music therapy, you often see percussion instruments like drums, shakers, xylophones, or even guitars, but rarely do you find ideas or songs for wind instruments being used in music therapy. Now, it goes without saying that COVID has altered considerations for this particular category of instruments, but I want to talk about them in the event that you're able to utilize them because I think personally they're an underrated instrument in our toolbox and there are a lot of excellent uses for wind instruments. So let's talk about some of the benefits of using them in therapy. Wind instruments support speech through increasing breath control. It strengthens diaphragmatic and intercostal muscles. It exercises bilabial and oral motor muscle control needed for talking and eating. It mimics speech and encourages vocalizations through communication. It can reduce breathlessness. It can increase speaking and singing endurance, and it can improve expiratory pressure. Now, when we're talking about wind instruments, that generally can include instruments from an oboe to a kazoo, but in music therapy, we'll typically find less technical and more accessible wind instruments such as slide whistles, kazoos, recorders, train whistles, and harmonicas. Now, thinking about the benefits and the types of instruments, what are some populations that you might use wind instruments for? For young children with speech delays? For adults and older adults with Parkinson's? For any age group that is working on rehabilitative purposes due to an accident or perhaps a brain injury, the list goes on and there are a wide variety of populations and needs that wind instruments do an excellent job of working on. Now that we know what wind instruments can work on, who they can be used with, and the benefits of using wind instruments, let's talk about some music ideas because I don't know about you, but I'm always looking for ideas and wind instrument songs in particular can sometimes be tricky to find. But here's a little list that I've compiled with some examples of how I've used them in sessions. So for littles, everybody's favorite baby shark. I like to use the happy baby shark version. Um, The bonus to using Happy Baby Shark is you're singing about different emotions, so you can work on teaching or um, expressing emotions, and this is a fun song that you can use for a kazoo or a recorder. For teens and young adults, um, I'll just say a lot of pop and house or dance pop songs that have really simple hooks or instrument breaks work great for some kazoo solos. So some popular songs that I've thought of and have actually used before with kazoos in particular are Little Talks by Of Monsters and Men, Pompeii by Bastille, Uptown Funk, the intro to Uptown Funk in particular by Bruno Mars, Stay by Justin Bieber and Kid Leroy. I always opt for the Kids Bop version. (laughs) The Good Part by AJR, the intro to this song in particular, and if your teens or adolescents are really into TikTok, they'll be sure to know that song. Wonder by Shawn Mendes, 
Hey Brother by Avicii. And I'll just say a lot of these songs are also excellent for lyric analysis or um, song-based discussion. Another song that I have adapted um, and used with Littles is a song called Want to Whistle by The Learning Station. It's an excellent song to use for a slide whistle. And an added bonus of a slide whistle I have found is you are really able to hear the difference between strong diaphragmatic support or not. Because the whistle sounds different if there is enough um, air movement. So you're really able to gauge from blow to blow kind of on the whistle how well your client is supporting it with their breath which can be a really great therapeutic advantage if that's your goal of using the whistle plus slide whistles are fun and they do require a lot of coordination between um everything that's going on to use the whistle and hands to hold and hands to slide. So it might be a little advanced for some littles, but for those that have the uh, coordination and the gross motor movement skills, as well as fine motor skills, it can be a really great exercise for them. Now for maybe some adolescents, teens, and for adults, any song with a simple or recognizable riff could be an excellent choice for a kazoo solo. So some options might be the intro to Smoke on the Water, Sweet Caroline, the ba ba ba, or do 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 could be a fun thing to incorporate, and Ring of Fire. Now Ring of Fire, the solo in particular, uh, the the uh, trumpet solo in the middle of the song rather, could be great for harmonicas, recorders, or kazoos. I've actually used kazoos also um, during a really great intergenerational rock band experience at Drury University. Um, we used kazoos for the solo on Little Talks by Of Monsters and Men. So for intergenerational ensemble, that was a really great choice and everybody loved it. It was super fun. Another note here is that for um, neurologic music therapists, OMREX intervention is a great intervention that utilizes wind instruments to rehabilitate speech. So if perhaps you are looking for a different angle for more rehabilitative goals, um, seek some NMT training. Or if you are NMT certified, maybe brush up on the OMREX protocol and consider how to use wind instruments. Lastly, this is one other area um, that I really like to find opportunities to use wind instruments for, and that is children's books. So again, this is particularly valuable for littles um, with speech delays. This is one population that I really like to use, th use this. Um, any books that have repetitive choo-choo, beep-beep, or doo-doo sounds, um, Several examples are the book Chugga Chugga Choo Choo. Obviously, for that, I'll be using a train whistle. Um, Little Blue Trucks Beep Along book. You could be really flexible with that instrument. And then Down by the Station is another great train book for a train whistle. Um, really, any train book works great <laughs> for train whistles, obviously, or any train songs. Um, and as a bonus, using children's books, you are working on preliteracy skills, attention, and fine motor if you also include tactile visuals. But because of the repetition and learning the flow of the book and how to read and working on that sequence um, in those repetitive books, that really sets them up for successful exercise of filling in those sound effects using wind instruments and building up all of those muscles and getting all of the benefits that we talked about at the beginning of the episode. So a couple of therapeutic considerations that you might want to think about are the client ability level or fine motor skills. Um, so how much assistance or adaptation do they need to be successful? Do they need help holding the instrument? Um, is the instrument maybe too big or too difficult um, to blow into? Is it something that is going to sound good and be encouraging? And for clients with low breath capacity, um, if that's something, especially if that's something that you're working on building up, 
It's always a good idea to incorporate breathing exercises and warm-ups into your work to support good breath support and technique. Um, Again, we never want to set up a client to um, overexert themselves or to be unsuccessful because we didn't help prepare um, not only their mind, but also their body. Um, And so those breath exercises could be um, more traditional singing exercises, especially if you're working with adults. Or they could be more disguised as something fun for littles. So just keeping that in mind. And then lastly, um, in the resources for this episode, by the way, I've put links to some of these songs, the books that I mentioned, and there's going to be one last thing that I attach, which is just a little resource on how to keep your wind instruments clean and sanitary because that can be something that's a little bit tricky and admittedly they take a little bit more work to sanitize but it can be incredibly worth it and so I just attached a little resource for that but I would encourage you to do some more research on how you can cheaply and easily keep your instruments nice and clean. I hope you found this episode fun and I would love to hear about some of the ways that you use wind instruments in your music therapy sessions. Give us a shout out at musictherapyandbeyond at gmail.com. Have fun, celebrate National Kazoo Day, and we'll see you next time. For all the show notes and resources for this episode and every episode, make sure to check out our website, musictherapyandbeyond.com, and follow us on Instagram, Twitter, and Facebook to make sure you're up to date on all of our announcements.